What will America and the world be like in 2050? What does the future hold? How will we live and move in the decades ahead? How will America stay competitive? The issues and challenges, as well as the opportunities that confront us, are many. Population growth, an aging population, a growing world appetite for a dwindling supply of oil, climate change concerns, and the need to reduce emission of greenhouse gases in all sectors, congestion problems that have reached the boiling point. It is a time for vision, a new long-term view of what we want and how we can get there. APTA's executive committee, in creating Transit Vision 2050, recognized the importance of a compelling, motivating vision that will capture the bold role for public transportation in America's future. The chair of the visioning effort is Lee Sander, executive director and CEO of the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority. What does the future hold? What changes should we anticipate? What role will public transportation play in the decades ahead? How can APTA pursue this new long-term vision? These are among the most important questions of Transit Vision 2050. Harnessing the power of technology, Transit Vision 2050 capitalized on the Internet's ability to connect people. A specially designed web platform and webinars brought together experts, APTA members and stakeholders to share their views and to engage in a running conversation about the future. I'm very pleased that we have over 300 sites tuned in to today's webinar. Many of those sites are a conference room where a number of people are joining us. We welcome all of you today, and we want all of you to go to the Transit Vision 2050 website, sign on, share, and help shape the vision. Our efforts were organized around three overarching issue areas, quality of life, sustainable environment, and economic health. In September, at our first webinar, Brookings Institution's Robert Puentes and other experts outline demographic and social trends that are likely to impact how we will live and move in 2050. There are five mega trends where you can break these demographic um, changes up into, and I'll walk through each of these very quickly. The first is in terms of population growth. The nation is still growing very, very quickly. The aging of the population has been getting a lot of attention lately. The senior tsunami that we're all expecting it really is a, a real thing. It's going to have tremendous impacts. Immigration, front and center in American um, political dialogue today. Household formation, we're moving away from, I think, what we thought about as traditional families. Uh, and internal migration, people moving around this country in ways that um, is heretofore unseen. The growth and importance of large metropolitan regions, so-called mega-regions, was also identified as an important trend that will continue in this century. We've observed that much of the growth in the 21st century is going to take place in 10 emerging mega-regions that we've identified, which are shown here on this map. Mega-regions are networks of metropolitan areas, the best example being the Northeast, which was first identified in the 60s as megalopolis, so that urbanized area stretching from southern Maine to northern, northern Virginia. As a planning idea, they provide a framework for thinking about large infrastructure systems, um, challenges that can't be addressed at a single metro scale. While our population is growing older, it is unclear how large a role that public transit will play in meeting travel needs of older adults. I think it's very important for um, everyone to recognize that uh, Transit is not the number one choice for many of our members, and it's, it's a challenge for us as an organization as we absolutely are committed to um, working to change the mentality, honestly, in this country, um, not just for our members, the older population, but for everyone to not be as car dominant a culture. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, our members have come up in that world and, are, um, are, and represent that in their desire to stay driving as long as possible. Uh, there are things we can do to help, and they include um, focusing on things like travel training so that there is an encouragement and an acknowledgement that you've never ridden a bus before, we're going to help you learn how to ride a bus. And AARP actually has been doing some wonderful initial work with that with um, the, the transit folks in River City, Kentucky. As we look to the future, the issue of global warming and climate change looms large. At a session at APTA's annual meeting, which was streamed live via the internet, the focus was on issues related to the physical and natural environment 
and how they will impact the future of public transportation. Here's David Gardner and Peter Lehner, environmental experts. The problem is that we have gases that we're emitting here on Earth that uh, are being trapped in the Earth's atmosphere. There were many there naturally already. So finally, again, the scale of the climate challenge, it's huge and long term. I think the encouraging part is both the public and policymakers are now thinking about solutions. And this is where transit comes in. Transit and smart growth have the potential to offer a lot to people. Uh, pro climate change is one of those problems that can make you feel like it's so big and it's so huge that we can never do anything about it. But transit offers the opportunity to say, yes, we can do something about it. We were recently at an NRDC retreat, board retreat, and Tom Friedman, the New York Times columnist, was with us. And he talked about being in China and having Chinese people saying, well, maybe we shouldn't act until the US takes action. And his response was, fine, take your time. Because whoever acts first are going to be the ones who are, in fact, building the clean energy technologies the clean air transportation technologies, and when the world does shift to those, which it will need to do, they will be the ones that will make Bill Gates look poor. We have a tremendous economic opportunity here uh, for the United States. Right now, we're largely squandering it, but we can hope that in the future we'll take it. It's not only, as I said, economic, though. It, it really drives the, the rest of the world's policies. The issue of energy and economic health was the topic of our third webinar. Can America reduce its addiction to oil? What role does transportation play in our economic future? Jeremy Rifkin set forth a compelling perspective on what he calls the third economic revolution. What I want you to imagine in the public transport industry is in 30 years from now, we produce our own energy locally. And the two conveyors of energy are going to be infrastructure and transport vehicles. I want you to imagine in 25 or 30 years from now that every infrastructure in the world is both habitat and a power plant that takes local renewable energy with solar roofs or wind or garbage or whatever, generates it in the infrastructure, stores it with hydrogen, and then shares it on grid. I want you to imagine that every public transport vehicle, actually every vehicle that's powered by hydrogen fuel cells which stores renewable energy is both a vehicle for transportation, and when it's not used, a plug-in vehicle to produce power locally or to share it with others. What I'm suggesting to you is a economic revolution where our infrastructure and our transport vehicles become actually the loading zones to collect renewable energy, store them with hydrogen, and ship them. The three webinars generated lively discussion on demographic and social trends, global warming, economics, infrastructure, and energy dependence. How do we meet these challenges? What are the opportunities? Clearly, there is a need for action. Transportation has helped mold every era of American history. From the era of the clipper ships, to the great rise of railroads, to the automobile age, to the jet age. While we can't predict the future fully, we can influence the future. Together, let's shape the future of public transportation.